Good morning, world. This is Dr. Rico Short, the Root Canal, specialist to the stars, the grace, life, teacher, the inspirational motivator for you on this thankful, thankful Thursday, man. I'm so thankful. You know why? Because I'm alive and everything that's alive, God gives hope. So that means I have life and hope. And today, I'm expecting to be the greatest day that I've ever experienced. And you may be asking me, why, Dr. Short? Why? Why, do you, why are you expecting? It's because that's what God has called us to do. God has called us every day, waking up, expecting for something great to happen. And so that's how I live my life. Now, does everything happen great every day? It all depends on how you look at it. <laughs> it all depends on how you look at it. See, like they say, beauty is in the eye of, be of the beholder. Perspective is in the eyes of the person that focus on, more on the positive than the negative. That wasn't even what I was going to talk about this morning, but somebody need to hear that. Somebody need to change their perspective. You need to change your lens and look through the lens of grace and look through the lens of, man, anything can happen as a believer, man. Anything can happen, man. God, I read a scripture the other day. It just, you know, got to my spirit and I was just so excited about it. It says that God rejoices over us. We are always on God's mind, man. He's always singing over us. God, can you imagine God, the creator of the universe, the creator of you and I? He's always singing over us. I'm not talking about his angels singing over us. I'm talking about God himself sings over us because we are created in his image and in his likeness. Man, that's enough. I can turn it off right now on that. That God, if you meditate on it, man, God is singing over you right now. If you're listening to me or you can hear me, God, right now, right this second, it doesn't matter what you did last night. It doesn't matter what you did this morning, good or bad, man, God is still singing over that's amazing, man. But today, I want to talk to you guys about can you stand the rain? You remember that song in the 80s, one of my favorite songs by New Edition. Can you stand the rain? Storms may come. This we know for sure. But tell me, baby, can you stand the rain? And in life, man, Rain is going to happen to all of us. But will you be able to stand the rain? And how do you prepare for the rain? It reminds me of the story of Noah. See, God made an announcement that it's going to rain. It didn't rain yet. There wasn't a cloud in the sky, but Noah was the one that believed him. He started building an ark and people thought he was crazy. Like, why are you building this huge boat and it's sunny outside? And that's a word for you, man. God may be telling you to do something. And there's no evidence around you that it's going to happen. But you just have to trust God. You have to, what I always call, walk out on faith. You may not can see the whole staircase, and that's okay. But just take one step at a time. So Noah built this ark. And do you know right when he finished the ark, it started raining. See, he was prepared for the blessing. Oh, man, that's a word. See, if you wait until the blessing comes and didn't get prepared, you're going to get swept away in the flood. Ooh. Man, if you wait until the blessing starts coming and you're not prepared, you're going to drown in the flood. So you have to start preparing before the blessing comes or else it's going to be a burden. In other words, if you can't return one or two calls right now, from your business partners, you can't return one or two calls from your friends before God start raining blessings on you, before God give you this unprecedented favor, before God's open the floodgates, so to speak. You're not going to be able to handle it when he brings the rain. And it's going to be a burden, not a blessing. Can you stand the rain? See, we know sunny days we're going to have, but can you? You stand the rain. And we're going to have rain in relationships. We're going to have rain in our marriage. 
But can you stand the rain? When we have pressure in our marriage, what are you holding on to? Are you holding on to what Wendy Williams says and she's not even married? Are you holding on to what Oprah says in her magazine and she's not married? Or are you holding on to what the word of God says? Because Christ, we are his bride. We are married to him and he knows how marriages work. The Bible says a three strand cord is not easily broken. You, your spouse, and the Holy Spirit getting involved in that marriage cannot be broken. And also in the marriage vows, it says that whatever God has put together, let no man, no person, no demonic spirit separate it. Can you stand the rain? Are you putting work in your marriage? I remember there was a time me and my wife, man, we were so busy. You know, practice was going well. We was so busy managing other things and sowing in other people's lives. And we wasn't sowing in our marriage. And our marriage was dying out. So I decided, hey, Friday night is going to be our date night. We don't care what's going on. We're going to get together if it's only for a few hours. And we're going to stare at each other over some food. <laughs> And we're going to talk and we're going to hold hands and we're going to love on each other. And I'm going to tell you, man, that's like vitamins to a marriage. That's that's like that's like getting an infusion of joy, even if it's only just one day, even if it's just only a few hours, man, because I'm going to tell you your first ministry, your first job is to take care of of your spouse besides God your spouse and your marriage is your most important ministry It's more important than your business It's more important than your children in fact let me tell you something the more you take care of your marriage the more blessed your children are gonna be you know why because when your children see a godly marriage they're gonna want one for themselves so when you got this Tom Dick and Harry come and try to holler at your daughter they're going to be like, nah, man, I ain't even going for that. My daddy ain't even like that. You know, my daddy opened the door for me. My daddy talks nicely to me. My daddy don't curse me out. My daddy isn't rude to me. And my daddy isn't rude to my mom. So if you can't treat me like I see my dad treat my moms, you can keep on stepping, Jack. I don't care how much money you have. I don't care if you little baby, big baby. Two chains, three chains, 10, 20 million chains. I'm going to keep it moving. And when you have a godly marriage and your children see that you have a godly marriage, not a perfect marriage, because none of the marriages are perfect. But we are striving to have a holy matrimony, a marriage where we can respect one another, a marriage that we can know when to speak and when to be quiet and a marriage that we can focus on always uplifting each other that's a godly marriage and we have mistakes i have issues my wife have issues and we have to depend on god to help us with those issues and be honest with them can you stand the rain it also reminds me of noah being in the ark Noah wasn't afraid. You know why? Because he and his family and all the animals was in the ark. And the ark represents a type of Christ. So as long as we are in Christ, see the storms may blow. I'm pretty sure Noah got jostled around in the ark, but he was kept safe in the ark. And that's the same way as we put our faith in the finished work of Jesus we are in that spiritual arc. No matter what happens around us, we just don't let what happens around us get inside of us. Do you know boats only sink because the water that gets inside of it is not the water that's on the outside, it's the water on the inside. And that's what stress, worry, doubt, and unbelief, it's like water in the ocean that gets inside of our heart of our spiritual boat and that's what causes us to sink in distress and 
and feel bad and feel guilty. And not only that, feel condemnation because condemnation, in my opinion, is the root to all types of evil. And see, Jesus came to give us the gift of no condemnation. That's what he gave the woman that got caught in the act of adultery, that everybody could have stoned her, but he was the only one that legally could have because the other people were trying to stone her, but they had sin. Jesus said, he who has sin cast the first stone, stone and, the, and the Bible says they all left away, starting with the oldest down to the youngest. And have you ever thought about this? In order to commit adultery, you have to have two people. Where was the guy? Could it have been that one of those people that was getting ready to stone her slept with her? Because he wrote something on the ground. What if he wrote their names <laughs> and times and dates of when they slept with this lady? And they saw their names down there and they's like, let me get up out of here. And Jesus was the only one that could have stoned her, but he didn't. And you know what he gave her? He gave her the gift of no condemnation. That's how she was able to go and sin no more. It wasn't a commandment of don't you sin no more or something more is going to happen to you. No, man. It was a gift of no condemnation, which gave her the ability to get out of that sin nature, to get out of that addiction that she had. And that's the same thing with us. That's how she was able to stand the rain. So today, on this thankful Thursday, I want to encourage you, man, no matter what you're going through in life, with Christ, you can stand the rain. Because remember, storms will come. This we know for sure. But in Christ, you and I can stand the rain. All right? Grace life. Peace.